We'll see mostly 70s for tomorrow and for Wednesday. That front moving away, cooler air slowly filtering in, high pressure building into our north and helping to keep the cooler air in place. Then it gets warmer as we get into Thursday and the first part of Friday. But the second part of Friday involves this, a really strong cold front making its way down through the southeastern U.S., pulling that Arctic air down across most of the country, and that cold air moves into our area Friday night, Saturday, Saturday night, and then we slowly start to warm up on Sunday. So here's the temperature trend for the next few days. The high temperatures tomorrow, mid to upper 70s, same thing for Wednesday, pretty close to 80 on Thursday and at least for the first part of Friday before that colder air starts to rush in. For a beach and boating, we're looking at uh, one to two foot seas for the most part. Intracoastal with a light chop, the risk for rip current is low and the water temperature somewhere in the vicinity of mid to upper 70s depending on where you are. Tonight, cooler in spots, could see a little patchy fog. We've got uh, temperatures that'll reach the mid 50s in Vero Beach, 55, about 53 in Okeechobee tonight, 55 Bell Glade, 54 Indian Town along the coast, more mid to upper 50s, 57 in Jupiter, 59 West Palm, all the way down to Del Rey, and maybe 60 in Boca tonight. So a cool start for tomorrow, definitely jacket weather in the morning, then much warmer than that in the afternoon with temperatures getting up into the upper 70s and a breeze out of the northwest. Look at the seven day forecast. Unbelievable. Each morning, a little cooler. In fact, tomorrow night into Wednesday morning looks like the coolest morning of the work week with temperatures in the 50s and we could tiptoe into the 40s around Lake Okeechobee early Wednesday morning. But then we warm up into the mid to upper 70s again near 80 on Thursday and Friday. Our highest chance for week, uh, rain this week is going to be on Friday as that strong cold front moves through. It's about a 30% chance for rain. And then look at the difference in temperatures here. We dive down into the 40s Friday night into Saturday morning. Wind chills in the 30s and 40s. We barely make it into the 60s on Saturday. I think most of our highs will be in the 50s on Saturday. And then we dive again Saturday night into Sunday morning, back down into the 30s and 40s, coming up to about 70 degrees on Sunday and then mid 70s by Monday of next week. Let's look at your forecast. All right, Glenn, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, the cryptocurrency industry is starting 2023 amid growing fraud concerns. That's right, from failed digital coin exchanges to online scams, and now law enforcement and federal regulators are issuing new warnings. In today's Consumer Watch, Mike Valerio has a look at how to avoid becoming a victim. Get ready for another crypto roller coaster ride this 2023. The FBI and other agencies are raising concerns about an online scam called pig butchering. We're not talking about what's going on on farms. We're talking about a cryptocurrency investment scam that is sweeping the country. It is costing Americans billions of dollars in losses. Authorities are urging you to be careful when getting random texts or messages through social media with invitations to start investing in cryptocurrencies. When you finally ask for your money, guess what? Your friend has disappeared. It comes as several recent crypto related headlines sent a chill through an already anxious community. First, Sam Bankman Fried, the founder of failed crypto exchange platform called FTX, pleaded not guilty this month to federal fraud and conspiracy charges linked to his company's meltdown. Then, the SEC charged six people in an investment scheme called CoinDeal that raised more than $45 million on false promises of access to blockchain technology. And also this month, U.S. regulators have issued their first joint statement warning banks and others about the risks of fraud, volatility, and poor risk management in the crypto world. So what can you do to avoid becoming a victim? Law enforcement officials say scammers usually target their victims by sending mass texts, hoping somebody takes the bait. The perpetrators of these crimes have been trained in techniques of uh, psychological deception, in techniques to gain people's trust. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mike Valerio. Good information there. Covering your community now, this is your chance to help give local veterans the trip of a lifetime. Southeast Florida Honor Flight is hosting its monthly meeting at 6.30 tonight. They're going to help bring veterans to places like Washington, D.C., as, as they've done so many years in the past. You can scan the QR code on the bottom right of your screen to see how you can attend online. Or if you want to go in person, the meeting is at 800 Southeast Monterey Road in Stewart. It is open to the public and any volunteers who want to organize upcoming trips. More internet satellites are headed to space today. SpaceX is planning to launch its latest Falcon 9 rocket with 40 satellites on board. 
Liftoff is expected at 1150 tonight from Cape Canaveral. Well, John Deere is giving farmers a long sought right to repair agricultural equipment on their own. The agreement signed Sunday follows years of lawsuits and complaints. It means farmers can now diagnose and fix their John Deere tractors without using company parts or facilities. The American Farm Bureau Federation says the agreement also protects John Deere's intellectual property. Well, Ronzoni has announced those tiny star-shaped pastina will be discontinued this month. Oh, pastina, I know, has been a fan favorite for a very long time. You often see it in soups, right? Yeah. According to Ronzoni, the decision to discontinue pastina was made after its long-term supplier said it would no longer be able to make the pasta. The company said it was unable to find an alternative solution. The dismay is such that there are petitions for Ronzoni to keep Pastina. Mm. One petition had more than 2,800 signatures. You gotta love the love. Mm -hmm. Macy's is reporting holiday sales on the lower end of its range during the holiday quarter. The retailers Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales met expectations and the week leading up to and following Christmas beat expectations. But Macy says its sales lulls during the non-peak weeks were deeper than anticipated. Despite all that, according to the MasterCard Spending Pulse, U.S. retail sales increased 7.6% from November 1st to Christmas Eve compared to the same time last year. Well, LinkedIn is seeing a resurgence thanks in part to recent layoffs in the tech and media industries. In 2022, the LinkedIn mobile app was downloaded some 58 million times. That's up 10% from the previous year, according to research firm Sensor Tower. LinkedIn says it has seen record engagement among its 875 million members. <laughs> Meanwhile, there were 22% more posts in November mentioning open to work compared to the prior year. And this is pretty cool. Beauty company L'Oreal is creating a more inclusive lipstick for people with limited mobility. The device is called Hapta. It first premiered at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. L'Oreal calls it the world's first handheld computerized makeup applicator, giving users full range of motion. It includes real-time sensors and motion controls. Well, after 15 tries, the House has a speaker. What was behind the week-long delay and what comes next for Congress? We'll talk about it coming up.
You're watching WPBF 25 News at 4. Thanks for staying with us here on your Monday. I'm Shane Wright. And I'm Tiffany Kenny. A really nice, beautiful, cool start to our week. Yep. But by the end of the week, guess what? It's going to get even colder. Our first morning meteorologist, Glenn Glazer, joining us with more on this fantastic stretch of weather we're seeing today. This is kind of the kind of weather that sort of increases your honeydew list, I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> like today, my wife's like, you're working nights? You could get some of that stuff done today. It's so <laughs> nice outside. I'm get, like, oh, yeah. Get I those I, hedges done. I guess I can. <laughs> get it you don't want me with a hedge trimmer, Shane. Are you kidding? All right, let me show you what's going on. <laughs> Here's we check out what's happening in Boca. Good afternoon, everyone. Great Monday today. Started off cool this morning, warmed up nicely to the upper 70s, even a few low 80s this afternoon. And then we're going to cool down pretty quickly tonight. We have light northerly winds coming in right now. It's been a little breezy at times, but we actually had a cold front that moved through the area today. It's not a very strong cold front, and comparatively speaking, it's really weak compared to what we're going to see later this week into the weekend. A really strong cold front on the way for Friday. In fact, the kind that we saw right around Christmas time. But for today, we're looking at those warm temperatures slowly decreasing and falling into the 50s overnight with a few 60s here and there. Not much in the way of cloud cover, no rain on the radar, and no chances for rain. At the moment, we're looking at temperatures now that are in the low 70s in Port St. Lucie. We're still in the upper 70s in Boca and Del Rey, mid 70s West Palm, low 70s in Jupiter, mid to upper 70s around the lake. So a pretty steady decrease in temperatures, about two to three degrees per hour as we continue through the overnight hours tonight until we get down into the 50s. Tomorrow night will actually be cooler than tonight and Friday and Saturday night, boy oh boy, it's going to be cold. We'll talk all about it coming up. Thank you very much, Glenn. After more than six months of investigating former President Donald Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election in Georgia, a special grand jury has completed its work. Special grand juries in Georgia cannot issue indictments, but the Atlanta area panel has written a final report on whether Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis should pursue charges. It has also recommended that report be published. A hearing is scheduled for the 24th of this month to discuss whether to make that report public. The 23 person special grand jury was seated in May of last year with the power to subpoena witnesses. And this afternoon, the 118th Congress set to gavel into session. Yeah, the first order of business for the House agreeing on the rules that will govern the body over the next couple years. It comes after a historic speaker election. Kevin McCarthy ultimately prevailing in a divided House Republican conference on the 15th ballot. On the 14th ballot, McCarthy fell one vote short. Tempers clearly on edge. McCarthy confronted one of the Republican holdouts, Florida's Matt Gates, then fellow Republican Mike Rogers of Alabama. He needed to be physically restrained from going after Gates. While the deal was struck, McCarthy had to make deep concessions, including allowing a single lawmaker to force a vote to remove the Speaker of the House. My father always told me, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Now McCarthy faces his next challenge, keeping everyone in his caucus on the same page as they try to govern even those that didn't want him as speaker. The U.S. Coast Guard says close to 300 migrants tried to reach Florida's shores over the weekend. Officials say the 273 migrants were from Cuba. They were found in overloaded, dangerous boats yesterday near Key West. Last Friday, Governor Ron DeSantis activated the state's National Guard to manage the surge of migrants arriving in the Keys. The state will use the Guard's airplanes and helicopters to patrol the waters. Uh, since October, close to 5,000 Cuban migrants have been detained trying to reach the state. Meanwhile, Colorado's governor says he will stop busing migrants to Chicago and New York. Governor Jared Polis says his decision comes after meeting with mayors from both cities. The last bus of asylum seekers arrived in New York yesterday. As of last week, the city took in nearly 36,000 migrants. Chicago reported receiving more than 3,800 from Texas alone. Now to the nation's southwest border, where President Joe Biden made his first trip Sunday since taking office. His visit comes as the Republican-led House promises to investigate the administration's handling of the surge in migrants at the southern border. ABC's Justin Finch with the latest from Washington. On a Texas tarmac, Governor Greg Abbott greeting President Biden with a letter outlining his plan to address the crisis at the border. I, I urge him in the letter uh, to see the real chaos. Biden's first trip to the U.S.-Mexico border as commander-in-chief comes as El Paso grapples with this latest migrant surge where he met with border guards and promised more resources. 
averaging 2,500 daily apprehensions last month. The administration sending new funding and manpower, helping to cut that number to about 700 per day. The president joining top Homeland Security officials to tour a migrant processing center and speaking with field agents and local leaders. The DHS secretary calling out Congress for not fixing the country's broken immigration system. We want individuals who qualify for relief under our laws to come to the United States in a safe and orderly way. The administration's new immigration policies include sending 30,000 migrants back to Mexico every month while launching an extended parole program allowing 30,000 migrants from Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua and Venezuela the chance to request asylum monthly provided they clear strict requirements such as having a sponsor in the U.S. and passing background checks. Tenemos la fe de que nos van a ayudar. This man from Venezuela telling ABC he has faith the U.S. will help him. The president is now in Mexico City, where he will meet with that country's president to discuss topics, including strengthening U.S.-Mexico supply chains and the migrant crisis. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. House Republicans are planning on forming a new select committee investigating the Department of Justice and the FBI. Lawmakers want to target the agencies and their ongoing investigations into former President Donald Trump. The committee is a result of one of the key concessions House Speaker Kevin McCarthy made to secure the gavel. If the proposal passes, McCarthy would pick eight lawmakers to sit on the committee and Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries would pick five. Still to come, Prince Harry speaking about his relationship with the royal family, including his brother and future king, Prince William. The one-on-one -on -one interview you'll only see WPBF 25 next. Tomorrow morning, a new Disney World ticket deal. How much money you'll save just for calling Florida home. Plus, the two local counties just named the most generous this past year. Manage your mornings with us. Timely forecasts warning you first so storms don't cloud your day. The best ways to get around traffic tie-ups and how the news happening now impacts you. Get a positive start. Watch WPBF 25 News Mornings.
The Princess of Wales is celebrating her 41st birthday today. Kate Middleton has been a member of the royal family now for 11 years. Yeah, Kate is celebrating her birthday the day before Prince Harry's memoir, Spare, is set to come out. He sat down with Michael Strahan on Good Morning America to discuss the biggest surprises in that book. I don't think that we can ever have peace with my family unless the truth is out there. There's a lot that I can um, forgive but there needs to be conversations and then in order to, for reconciliation and part of that has to be accountability. In his new memoir, Spare, Prince Harry writes about the British royal family's complicated relationship he says they have with the British press and chronicles the family dynamics that led him and his wife, Meghan, to step back from royal life. Share with me the, the significance of the title. Within the family as such, there's a, a spare and the air. Mm -hmm. um, my brother being the heir and me being the spare. And so I think it was just a really good opportunity to choose a, a title that had been somewhat used against me for a long part of my life and own that title. To the outside world, Prince Harry and his brother Prince William have always appeared close, seemingly bonded by the death of their mother, Princess Diana, when Harry was just 12. In his memoir, Harry writes about a more complex relationship recalling verbal and even physical disputes between the brothers. You refer to your brother as your beloved brother and arch nemesis. Mm -hmm. Strong words. There has always been this competition between us, weirdly. Again, I think it really plays into always played by the air spare and the British press's part in that, right? They pitched the Waleses, right, of which Kate and William and are, are now against the Sussexes, me and my wife. They always pitched us against each other. They pitched Kate and Meghan against each other. So when they pitched them against each other, do you think that it made them kind of go against each other? Yeah, yeah, I mean, what, without question. Harry claims members of the royal family and their staff fed stories to the press and refused to set the record straight on false reports, especially about his wife, Megan, shifting a negative spotlight onto her in order to protect other royals. Do you have any examples of some of those stories? There's a whole handful of examples in the book. It's so petty, but it's the bridesmaids' dresses. Yeah. Right? That was a real hard one for me because I was like, we've moved on from that. But while I was writing the book, we were on version 29 or 30, all of which involved my wife supposedly making numerous people within my family cry, which just simply wasn't the case. For historical reference, mm -hmm. like the truth needs to be there and it needs to come from me. How would your mom feel about your relationship with your brother now? I think she would be sad. I think she'd be looking at, looking at it long term to know that there are certain things that we need to go through to be able to heal the relationship. And you can watch the full interview with Prince Harry about his new memoir, Spare, right now on GoodMorningAmerica.com. And joining us now is our co-anchor, Felicia Rodriguez, to look at some of the stories we have ahead at 5. Flea? All right, Tiff. Well, a powerful storm system leading to dangerous conditions in California. The evacuation order is now in place, and the threat thousands out there continue to face. And an incredible reunion years in the making. How a determined volunteer tracked down a dog's owner who lives several states from where this pup was found. Mm -hmm. Those stories and much more coming your way at 5. All right, Flea, thanks. Mm -hmm. So the come surprise of a lifetime. What prompted the New England Patriots owner to FaceTime a student in Maine and why the moment was so special for both of them.
Welcome back. One New England Patriots super fan got the surprise of a lifetime last week. Connor Magliozzi caught up with 10-year-old Kellen Tilton from Maine after he learned one of his dreams was about to come true. Kellen Tilton's love of football comes from his family. I've watched two of my brothers specifically. They love football. They they were in high school and I've been watching them since I was t since I was like one. Kellen watched them win two state titles and fell in love with the sport. My brother Sam, he's the bigger one, he would make the holes, and my brother Tucker, he was the running back, would run straight to him. Kellen is also a massive New England Patriots fan. As for his favorite player... Ramondre Stevenson, their running back. I mean, he's the best. He just... Whenever he sees a tiny hole, he goes right through it, and if there's someone in his way, he either stiff arms him or trucks him, trucks right through him. Not too long ago, Kellen attended a clinic hosted by the Patriots. With a catching ability that would give Jerry Rice a run for his money and one of the most upbeat personalities out there, Kellen caught the eye of the Patriots. Kellen was joined by his friends and family at school for a video call, having no idea what would happen next. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? You know, Kellen, you're an inspiration to our team, the players, our whole fan base. We're really proud to have you as a fan, and we want to do something for you, and that's to get you, send you and someone, whomever you choose, to go to the Super Bowl. I was so shocked. It was hard to focus on my school after that. <laughs> I had to go back to class. And as for his pick and who's going to be in the big game? Patriots and the 49ers. And to aid the Patriots in their quest for a Lombardi trophy, Kellen has a message for the man under center. So I would talk to Mac Jones and I would say, so you throw the dimes that you always throw. No matter what happens on the field, Patriots Nation is going to be represented by one of its best at Super Bowl 57. Gotta love that energy, right? Kellen is a cancer survivor and works to raise money and awareness for childhood cancer. Unfortunately for him, the Patriots did not make the playoffs after their loss yesterday, but we do hope maybe he can root for the Dolphins to make it to the big game. You never know. Glenn? All right, thanks, Shane. That's a great story. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what's going on outside. You may have noticed today, when you stepped outside this morning, the breeze was a little on the warmer side. Now, the winds are a little bit cooler, and that's because we did have a weak cold front that moved through the area today. So the winds behind that front are coming in out of the north and northeast and northwest, and they're slightly cooler, and there's drier air on the way in as well. Right now in Jensen Beach, 75 degrees, but it feels like 73 with those winds out of the north northeast as we get into the overnight hours tonight. Winds are going to die down a little bit, but there will be a slight wind chill overnight tonight. Cold front right here kind of moving off to the east and down to the south at the same time and helping to drag in some slightly cooler air. This was not a powerful cold front. We do have a very strong cold front on the way for the end of the week. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, no rainfall around, nor are we really expecting any. In fact, rain chances are less than 10% all the way through Thursday. The best chance that we have some for some rain and this is an optimistic 30% chance is on Friday as that next cold front moves through. So tomorrow high pressure continues to build in that keeps us pretty dry. It hangs around on Wednesday. In fact, it's right over top of Florida that keeps us pretty dry, but then the high starts to move away and here comes that strong cold front. It moves down through our area, mainly Friday morning through Friday about afternoon around 435 o'clock. That's when we have the chance for some showers lining up right along the front, but behind it, that much colder and drier air moving on in. So when we look at our future temperatures, once that front moves through, watch it. Let me run through the next couple of days. So tomorrow, high temperatures in the upper 70s. That's where we're going to be on Wednesday. And on Thursday, I think we'll even hit 80 in a few spots. But on Friday morning, that front starts to move in and our temperatures will start to drop pretty early. In fact, by one o'clock Friday morning, we could be seeing temperatures dropping into the 60s along the Treasure Coast and then the front sweeps through. And look at this. These are the high temperatures on Saturday, mid to upper 50s, maybe 60 
in a couple of spots. That's how strong that front is. Uh, seas one to two feet along the Treasure Coast, about two foot seas the intracoastal with the light chop. Let's get to that seven day forecast tomorrow. High temperatures mid to upper 70s start off with a cool morning in the 50s. Then we warm up into the mid to upper 70s. A cooler night on Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. We'll see 50s and maybe some 40s inland Wednesday morning, but we'll warm up in the mid to upper 70s. Then closer to 80 degrees Thursday and at least Friday morning front move through temperatures dive down into the 30s and 40s on Saturday morning and Friday night into Saturday morning. Highs in the upper 50s, low 60s Saturday, 30s and 40s with a wind chill again Saturday night and a high of about 70 on Sunday. That's a look at your first morning forecast. All right, Glenn, thank you. Well, a now defunct NASA satellite is back on Earth after falling into the Bering Sea last night. That's right. The Earth Radiation Budget Satellite launched in 1984 aboard Space Shuttle Challenger, operated for 21 years and orbited the globe for 38 years. The satellite held researchers look into how Earth absorbed and radiated energy from the sun. It also measured ozone, water vapor, nitrogen dioxide, and aerosol concentrations in Earth's stratosphere. It stopped doing the job in 2005 when the SAGE-3 on International Space Station took over those duties. All right, you've got the chance to drive this 27-foot-long mm. hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> be kind of fun, right? Yes, you heard her right. <laughs> Oscar Meyer is now recruiting the next class of drivers for its iconic Wienermobile. <laughs> the drivers are called hot doggers, and not only will you be able to drive the Wienermobile through 20 states, it will also serve as the Oscar Meyer spokesperson. So if you're graduating college and you're a senior, that's exactly who Oscar Meyer awesome. wants. Yeah, you got to apply before January but you have to learn the song. My baloney yeah, has a first certain. name. It's O S C A R. Hey, hey, yeah. hey, hey. I was going to be your beatbox. <laughs> well, thank you. All right, keeping snakes off of a plane. TSA agents at Tampa International Airport stopped a boa constrictor from taking flight. Yeah, I love these stories, right? The TSA tweeted out this photo showing an x ray of a passenger's carry on bag. Yep, right there. You can see the four foot snake coiled inside mm -hmm. the luggage. No. And top side of your screen there. <laughs> The woman claimed the snake named Bartholomew mm. was an emotional support pet. Stop. <laughs> the airline says that she was ticketed to fly on does not allow snakes on a plane. I mean, I'm not I'm not refuting that it's an emotional pet for her, but right. I'm just saying that I cannot on a carry on bag. Yeah, it's uh, because it is the making of a movie. We've seen that movie. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. We have seen that movie plenty of times before. WPBF 25 News at 4 returns in just a few minutes. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I've had it with me.
Before we go at four, here are some of the major stories you need to know about. Okay, let's get started. Uh, Harvey Weinstein was set to be sentenced today for three counts of rape and sexual assault in Los Angeles, but a date has now been pushed back. The disgrace movie mogul will be now sentenced February 23rd. A tweet from Tesla founder Elon Musk is now being investigated. It comes after Musk said an update coming this month would allow Tesla drivers to not have hands on the steering wheel. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says they've contacted Musk about that update. Several beaches on the Treasure Coast shut down today for restoration projects due to the damage left behind by two hurricanes last year. Tracking a station, Golden Sands and Amber Sands are the beaches closed today to bring in more sand after those storms. More Internet satellites are headed to space today. SpaceX is planning to launch its latest Falcon 9 rocket with 40 satellites on board. Liftoff expected at 1150 tonight from Cape Canaveral. That's going to do it for your news at 4. The PBF 25 News at 5 starts right now. Live, local, late breaking, WPBF 25 News at 5 starts now. Right now at 5, a man accused of two robberies on the Treasure Coast is now in jail. Tonight, what helped police find and arrest the suspect? And it's shaping up to be a historic playoff run for NFL fans here in Florida. The milestone that hasn't happened in two decades. Yeah, a weak cold front moved through the area. Today, it's going to be cool at night, but by the weekend, it's going to be cold at night. We'll talk all about that coming up. Breaking now, Bill Safety Demar Hamlin has been released from the hospital in Cincinnati and is back in Buffalo in an uplifting sign of the remarkable progress he has made. This comes just one week after Hamlin was given CPR on the football field after going into cardiac arrest from a hit he took while playing. Doctors say Hamlin is doing well in Buffalo, where he will continue his recovery. Just minutes ago, Dolphins head coach Mike McDaniel said, we will cheer for DeMar like he's a Miami Dolphin. That's a shared experience. Now at five, a man in jail after reportedly going on a one-hour crime spree in Port St. Lucie. Police say during that time, Walter Montgomery terrorized his victims. Good evening. I'm Tiffany Kenny and I'm Felicia Rodriguez. Thank you for joining us. Angela Rozier joins us live from the police department in Port St. Lucie with how tips from the community led investigators right to the suspect. Angela. That's right. As a matter of fact, they say not only did they receive tips from the public, but they also received confirmation from one of the victims after she saw the suspect's photo posted on social media. This is a photo of the suspect police at Port St. Lucie say is responsible for two robberies that took place over the weekend. 56-year-old Walter Montgomery is facing several charges. Police say at around 9 p.m. Saturday, the suspect approached a mother and her two children as they were leaving this drugstore in US-1, just north of Port St. Lucie Boulevard. He's accused of threatening to shoot the woman, stealing her purse, and then fleeing the scene. He approached her, um, shoved her, in her stomach, uh, demanded her belongings, and left her and her uh, two children that were with her very traumatized. Police say about an hour later, they received a call from this gas station off of Southeast Westmoreland Boulevard about another robbery, this one involving a knife. An individual went in, actually went into the uh, mobile station on Port St. Lucie Boulevard uh, and uh, took a certain amount of money from the uh, cash register from the cashier. Police released a surveillance photo showing the suspect with a knife in his hand and pointing it at the clerk. Investigators posted the photo on social media and after getting several tips, the suspect was taken into custody the next day. It turns out this individual has a long criminal history. He's been doing this uh, for several years um, and this seemed to be part of his trend. He did uh, two in one night and definitely for us, that's very troubling and traumatic. And we check with police a few moments ago. They say that suspect remains behind bars. He faces several charges, including aggravated battery. Reporting live in Port St. Lucie, Angela Rozier, WPBF 25 News. I'll search the ends of the earth for her. I don't care where it is. I'll go anywhere for her. I just want my daughter. That's it. A father pleading for answers tonight about his missing 11 year old daughter. Julia Williams hasn't returned home since she vanished from her bus stop in Riviera Beach last week. Jay Jarvis is live for us outside of JFK Middle School in Riviera Beach where she goes to school. And Jade, you spoke with the girl's father and he believes he knows the person who took her. 
Yeah, that's right, Felicia. Jalea's father believes that an estranged relative took Jalea from that bus stop last Thursday morning and possibly drove her across state lines. And the crazy part is I had this conversation with my daughter prior to me dropping her off. The events of last Thursday morning play on a loop in Willis Williams' mind. I said, Jalea, don't be no fool for nobody. Don't trust anybody. It was in my heart to say this to her. This was the morning that I dropped her off. Williams dropped Jalea off at her bus stop at Lakeshore Drive in East 27th Street in Riviera Beach around 840 that morning. He says there were other kids standing there, so he felt safe leaving her there to wait for the bus. But when he returned at 430 that afternoon to pick her up, he says other kids got off the bus, but not Jalea. Something just say, okay, you know what? Let me call to the school, see if they are having a, you know, a late bus run. They say, no, all the buses came out. Uh, she's not here on campus. William said he heard that an estranged relative drove to Florida from Georgia to take Jalea, and that's where he believes she is now. He has this message for his daughter. Just go home. I'm not mad. <laughs> I just want you home. I just want you here next to me. I'm used to you here with me. You've been with me since 2018. Now, Jalea is five foot two inches tall. She's 125 pounds and she has brown eyes and long brown braids. She was last seen wearing a turquoise polo short shirt and she was also carrying a pink Nike backpack. Now, if you have any information about where Jalea might be, you should call the Palm Beach County Schools Police Department or Crime Stoppers. Live in Riviera Beach, Jade Jarvis, WPBF 25 News. Jade, thank you. A car crash has led to an investigation after deputies found a man possibly shot to death inside that car. Our Josie Carbonari is on thank Pioneer you. Lane near West Palm Beach with what we're learning. Investigators say they found a man dead inside of a car with what appears to be gunshot wounds in the neighborhood here behind me. It happened right around 2 a.m. along North Haverhill Road and the 4900 block of Pine Air Lane in the West Palm Beach area. That entire street shutting down as multiple investigators with the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office Violent Crimes Division combed through the scene. They tell us when they arrived, the car that man was in was found crashed into the bushes. At this point, no suspects have been named so far. We're told detectives are working to find out what exactly unfolded here here and will be releasing more details as the investigation continues. In the meantime, an autopsy is scheduled to determine the cause of death. Reporting from West Palm Beach, I'm Josie Carbonari, WPBF 25 News. Josie, thank you. Police are also investigating a fatal shooting at a condo in West Palm Beach. A West Palm Beach man was shot multiple times at the Presidential Gulf View condominiums along Congress Avenue. The 33 year old died at the scene. Police are still searching for the suspect. Glenn. All right, thanks, Felicia. Let's take a look at what's going on here as we check out the Jupiter Inlet camera. What a gorgeous view we have from this camera here. The Jupiter Lighthouse, the boats coming in and out from a nice day out there. Not too bad. It feels like it's 75 degrees with the winds out of the north northeast, but it's actually 78 degrees. And that trend continues into the afternoon and evening hours tonight with these winds out of the north making it feel cooler than the actual temperatures. It's the winds behind this cold front that moved through today. And you may not even have noticed there was a cold front moving through. It's very, very weak. We got up to 80 degrees in West Palm Beach today, got into the upper 70s along the Treasure Coast and inland. So it was a warm day, not average, above average day. But we are going to see more average temperatures later in the week and even well below average temperatures by the weekend. Future track shows that we don't really have any chances for rain. We could see a little patchy fog as we get into the morning hours tomorrow, so be careful on that morning drive. Temperatures right now range from the low 70s in Sebastian to around 80 degrees in Boca and upper 70s around the lake. Hour by hour, we're going to lose a few degrees per hour as we move through the evening hours. We'll level out in the 50s across the area tonight. But remember, with that wind, it's going to feel a little bit cooler than the actual temperature. So dress for two or three degrees less than what the temperature says near your house. We're going to see temperatures go way down. As we get into the weekend, we could be seeing wind chills in the 30s and 40s by Friday night. We'll talk about that coming up.
Well, for the first time since 1999, all three Florida teams have a shot at making it to the Super Bowl. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers securing the fourth seed in the NFC to advance to the playoffs. Tom Brady led his team out on the field and would break his own NFL record for completions in a season. The Jacksonville Jags winning the AFC South by beating the Tennessee Titans on Sunday. It's their first trip to the postseason since 2017, and the Miami Dolphins will go up against the Buffalo Bills this Sunday in the NFL Wild Card Round. Despite a five-game losing streak and a third-string quarterback, the Dolphins got that key win Sunday to get into the postseason. But taking on the Bills will not be easy, especially in Buffalo. Here's sports reporter Yanni Caracas. It's officially on in the postseason for the Miami Dolphins after the Finns wrapped up their 9-8 regular season with a win over the Jets on Sunday. Now it's a familiar foe in the postseason. The Dolphins and Bills will square off for the third time this Sunday in Orchard Park. It's the rubber match of a three-game series. Miami took Game 1 in September. Buffalo took Game 2 at home in December. And while the Bills have looked markedly better than the Finns since that game, it's a clean slate now. It doesn't matter what you did during the regular season. Um, you know, you can have teams with horrible record come in and make a run. Teams with really great record losing the first rounds. We're one and one right now. Looking forward to the, to the challenge, and you know it's going to be a real good game. So, very huge rivalry. So it's going to be fun. They got a real good team, real good coaching, real good organization. So, going back there is going to be a tough environment, but um, we got experience there. So, um, it's going to be a good game. Not only are the Dolphins and Bills familiar division rivals, they played a lot in the 1990s in the playoffs. You may recall the Bills beat the Dolphins in 1990, 92, and 95, with Miami winning a playoff game against Buffalo in 1998. The latest chapter coming up this Sunday. Reporting in Miami Gardens, I'm Yanni Karakas, WPBF 25 Sports. The NFL playoffs bracket is set for this postseason. Here's the first games for each Florida team, starting with Jacksonville and the Chargers on Saturday. The Bucks will then play at home against the Dallas Cowboys in the wild card round next Monday. You can see that game right here on WPBF 25. Setting ground rules in the house. Why this next step could prove challenging for new House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Plus chaos in Brazil, why thousands of people stormed several government offices and the connection Florida has to the ongoing drama. And coming up all new at 530, the Martin County School District hosting its first ever pop-up job fair. The open positions they're looking to fill. You're watching WPBF 25 News at 5.
Right now, former Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro is in a hospital in Orlando suffering from severe abdominal pain. The former president has been hospitalized before for similar pain after he was stabbed in the stomach while campaigning back in 2018. Meanwhile, chaos unfolding in Brazil following the storming of government offices. Hundreds of Bolsonaro supporters have been arrested after they gained access to the country's congressional building, its Supreme Court, and the presidential palace. The security breach comes about a week after the inauguration of the country's new leader, Lula da Silva. The former president supporters have claimed the election was stolen. Now Brazilian authorities say they will prosecute and punish thousands of rioters. Bolsonaro flew to the U.S. before the current president was inaugurated last week. Students returned to campus in Idaho for the first time since a suspect was arrested in the murders of four students. The many questions that remain as the suspect gets ready to face a judge this week. Plus. And I was trapped. I couldn't get out the front door. The window's broken. I tried the back door. The back door was, couldn't open it. The powerful storm system that led to a terrifying night and the threat thousands are now facing. You're watching WPBF 25 News at 5. A new Congress reconvenes in Washington today, and House Republicans are set to vote on a new rules package soon. The rules outline how the chamber will run. This time around, it includes a key concession from House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Alex Brashe explains. This afternoon, the 118th Congress preparing to gavel back in session after a historic and at times raucous election for House Speaker. House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy finally being elevated to Speaker this weekend but it took 15 rounds of ballots in the bitterly divided GOP caucus, the longest election since 1859. My father always told me, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. 
McCarthy steadfast despite multiple public defeats. A speaker has not been elected. A speaker has not been elected. On the 14th ballot, McCarthy fell one vote short. Tempers clearly on edge. McCarthy confronted one of the Republican holdouts, Matt Gates. Then fellow Republican Mike Rogers of Alabama needed to be physically restrained from going after Gates. Even Donald Trump working to end the standoff. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene seen trying to pass her phone to a McCarthy opponent, DT, Trump's initials, seen on the caller ID. After half an hour, they struck a deal, but McCarthy had to make deep concessions, including allowing a single lawmaker to force a vote to remove the Speaker of the House. Now McCarthy faces his next challenge, keeping everyone in his caucus on the same page as they try to govern, even those that didn't want him as Speaker. They can only lose four Republican votes on any given issue. That means you've got to keep the moderates on board. You have to keep the rabble rousers aboard, the people that never wanted them to be there. Any given day is going to be a little bit different, uh, probably much like Democrats dealt with over the last four years with narrow majorities. But one of the points of focus for House Republicans is a new panel with sweeping authority to investigate ongoing criminal investigations, something that could spark a new fight with the Justice Department over ongoing probes, including those into former President Trump. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Right now, everyone in the town of Montecito, California, has been ordered to evacuate as flooding rains continue. And thousands of people are without power in Sacramento after a powerful storm system moved across the state. Trees were uprooted by the powerful winds, leaving many with damage to their homes. Two people are dead after trees fell on tents. One woman says she was actually looking out her home's window the moment a tree came crashing mm. towards her. Glenn, it's oh, been man. awful out west. It is just the pictures and the oh, just unbelievable out there. Uh, for us, pretty quiet, tranquil, if you will. We've got nice looking skies, lots of blue skies around, no clouds around, drier air moving in. A gorgeous day, 75 degrees in West Palm Beach right now. Feels like 75, even though winds are at about nine miles per hour. Overnight tonight, it'll feel a little bit cooler than the actual temperatures with the winds coming in out of the north and northwest. Water vapor imagery showing you the dry air in brown that continues to filter in behind today's cold front. Yeah, there was a cold front that moved through today. It was a really weak front and we still got up into the upper 70s and low 80s, which I'll show you in a moment, but it will be cooler tonight and it will certainly be cooler tomorrow night. Here's a quick look at the cloud cover on visible satellite. You can see there's the front there pulling in that slightly drier and cooler air in Vero Beach today. We started out right around average. But then we got up to about five degrees above average for our high temperature of 78 today. And the same thing happened in West Palm Beach. We started out right around average, but then ended up five degrees above average at 80 degrees, the average high 75. So slightly cooler air is going to move in now for the next couple of days. Not a lot cooler, just a little bit. We'll still be in the mid to upper 70s for high temperatures for tomorrow and for Wednesday. On Thursday and for the first part of Friday, we'll see warmer air moving in, drawing up out of the south and increasing our temperatures a little bit to close to 80 degrees. But then this powerful cold front swings through our area Friday morning into the early afternoon, bringing with it much colder air for Friday night through the weekend. Tonight, it's going to be a little cooler inland than along the coast. We're going to see light winds out of the north, about 55 overnight tonight in Vero Beach, 53 in Okeechobee, about 59 degrees West Palm, 60 down in Boca and Del Rey. So 50s across the board, but a little cooler inland. For boaters, we're looking at one to two foot seas tomorrow. The intracoastal with a light chop. The forecast for tomorrow, a cool start to the day. Then sun and a few clouds around temperatures in the upper 70s. We go into the mid to upper 70s on Wednesday after a very chilly night, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. 50s along the coast and maybe some 40s inland early Wednesday morning. Upper 70s Thursday and Friday chance for rain with that powerful cold front coming through on Friday. Friday and then temperatures take a dive Friday night into the 30s and 40s highs 50s and low 60s Saturday 30s and 40s again Saturday night and we'll struggle to make it to 70 on Sunday. That's a look at your forecast. All right, thank you, Glenn. Students at the University of Idaho are going back to class this week. They've already started to return to campus. It's the first time they've been back since police arrested a suspect in the murder of four of their schoolmates. Suspect Brian Koberger lived less than 10 miles away from the university and studied criminology at Washington State University. 
In court documents, investigators say Koberger carried out the murders at night while one of the surviving roommates was awake. Investigators say his DNA ties him to the murders. Koberger is scheduled to face a judge again on Thursday. Right now, nurses at two of New York City's largest hospitals are on strike in overpay and amid staffing levels. It came after a weekend of negotiations did not produce a deal for a new contract. The walkout involves as many as 3,500 nurses at Montefiore Medical Center in the Bronx and about 3,600 at Mount Sinai Hospital in Manhattan. Patients are likely to see disruptions in care, such as emergency room visits as well as childbirth. Well, now to the biggest night of the year in college football. We're just hours away from the national championship game. The undefeated Georgia Bulldogs take on the TCU Horned Frogs. This is a live look at a rainy SoFi Stadium in Southern California, where the game will be held for the first time. Rena Roy is there where fans will be pouring in any moment now. Tonight, all eyes are on the Georgia Bulldogs and TCU Horned Frogs as they face off in the biggest night of college football. Uh, we got to go play a really, really good football team and we'll have to play one of our best games of the year to be able to beat them. Heisman Trophy finalist and quarterback Stetson Bennett led the team to an undefeated 14-0 record after this year, one year after his storybook season going from walk-on to national champion. This time around, the number one team in the country hoping to make history as the Dogs try to become the first repeat champ since Alabama over a decade ago. It, it's national championship. It's the last one of the year. Um, it's the big one. It's, it's why we, 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 we were doing this winter workout so hard. It, it's what we, uh, we dream about when we're kids. TCU has its own Heisman finalist and storybook quarterback in Max Dugan, who started the season on the bench. The Horned Frogs are huge underdogs, unranked to start the season, then going 13-1 and and making it to the number three spot in the country after winning just five games last year. We come into this game with a lot of motivation, obviously. It's been a long season. Um, you know, I think we've exceeded expectations at least externally. If TCU wins tonight, it would be the school's first title since 1938. I think it's going to be a, a fun game. I think those are you know some of the reasons why we, we're going to have a shot, but you know it's, it's going to be a hard challenge for us. So of course it remains to be seen if tonight's game will bring us the drama on the field that will match last weekend's thrillers. That is what many fans are hoping to see. At SoFi Stadium, Rena Roy, ABC News. We never seem to cheer for the same teams. I know. I'm, I'm going for TCU because Sonny Dykes, the coach, used to be the coach for SMU. So right. I'm feeling like that's my team. And that's where I went to school. And you've got to cheer for Georgia because? Not that I'm a fan, <laughs> but they are SEC, so I've got to stick with the SEC. But we're both... We're fine with whoever wins. Yes, this is but true. But, I mean, let's not even talk about that because there's way bigger news that's going on with former Florida players right yes, now, right? Yes, this is true. This is breaking news. Tonight, former Florida quarterback Tim Tebow has been elected to the College Football Hall of Fame. That's all she's talking about today. <laughs> Tebow is the 13th Gator to enter the College Football Hall of Fame. In case you didn't know, there's a special relationship Felicia has with Tim Tebow. Tebow <laughs> led Florida to two BCS national championships and in 2007 became the first sophomore in college football history to win the Heisman Trophy. This is true. The love is still there for still our there. Tebow. I shouldn't there. say our, but yeah. your Tebow. You root for the Seminoles. <laughs> what know. are you talking? You see, this is how we are when it comes to football. We're always rooting for opposite teams. Next, a group of hospital workers are now lottery winners. Couldn't have happened to better people. The big prize that they are now sharing. And a dog that's been missing for years is heading back home. How rescue volunteers found his owner several states away. We'll be right back.
The emergency room staff in a northern Michigan hospital had a prosperous holiday after winning a million dollars from the Powerball lottery in October. The group consists of 78 nurses, doctors, and other health care workers. They started the lottery pool several years ago, and about 65 of them play consistently. The group won the big prize on Halloween, each member getting about $13,000. Well, it was, a, it was their time. It sure was. <laughs> and tomorrow's Mega Millions drawing is worth a massive $1.1 billion. That's with a B. Wow. The cash option, by the way, $568 million. It's the fifth largest lottery jackpot ever. And a heartwarming reunion in South Carolina. A pet dog that was lost for three years is now going home. Roscoe was brought to a rescue group after someone found him near a highway with an injured leg. Well, one of the people who rescued him looked up his chip, but the information wasn't current. And then in a last ditch effort, posted his picture on social media. The woman who commented on the post says Roscoe belongs to her brother Calvin, but got lost when they were in Myrtle Beach. Calvin and Roscoe are now set to be reunited. That's awesome. <laughs> You're watching WPBF 25 News at 5. Now at 5.30, a first ever pop-up job fair being held by one Treasure Coast School District who will now be paid $20 an hour. Plus, we're getting a first look at the new Brightline station in Orlando, the new luxury amenities that you can look forward to. First at 5.30, people on the Treasure Coast will have fewer options to enjoy the beach today. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Felicia Rodriguez. And I'm Tiffany Kenny. Three beaches are being closed for restoration after they were hit by two hurricanes last year. Caleb Califano is in Vero Beach with more on the timeline. Well, after being hit by back-to-back -back storms last year, the beaches here in Indian River County need repairs, and crews have limited time to do so. Take a look at your screen. These are the beaches that will be closed starting today for refurbishment. Crews will be adding more sand to dunes to help with erosion. The county tells me tracking station and Golden Sands were two of the hardest hit beaches from the storms, with tracking station losing around 10 feet of sand while also losing much of its boardwalk. While a lot of work, all three beaches need to be completed by the end of February, so they will be repaired before turtle nesting season, which begins in March. The turtles are important around this area for tourism. They like to come and look at the turtle nest and uh, there's some endangered turtles around. So we don't want any of the heavy equipment on the beach. Now the contractor on the restoration says they'll be working in a way that not all beaches across the county will be closed simultaneously. Only the three I mentioned will be closed starting today. Now for the rest of the beaches across the county, their closure times will be determined as restoration progresses. In Indian River County, Caleb Califano, WPBF 25 News. And breaking news, we're learning of a fatal accident involving a motorcycle in Palm Springs. Palm Beach County Fire Rescue just minutes ago confirming that a person was ki killed near 10th Avenue and Rudolph Road around 2 o'clock this afternoon. No word on what caused the accident or the identity of the person killed. A live look outside over the Jupiter Inlet. It's a beautiful evening as South Florida starts to see a cold front move yeah. in today. First 20 meteorologist Glenn Glazer joining us now. And Glenn, we have got some warm days and cool nights ahead of us. We really do. We really do. And in fact, it's going to be a little cooler tonight and even cooler tomorrow night. And then we get into a situation at the end of the week where we're going to be seeing temperatures similar to what we saw over Christmas, but not quite for as long as we did over the Christmas holiday. Let me show you what's going on here. PBIA looking good right now. Flights going in and out. We've got wind speeds anywhere from seven to eight to nine miles per hour with those winds coming in out of the north and that cold front that moved through today now just offshore. Live radar, no rainfall around, so we don't have any rain to tell you about. We do have temperatures to talk about, though. Temperatures have been falling pretty steadily over the past couple of hours. Now we're in the low 70s from Sebastian Navarro to Fort Pierce down to Stewart and Hope Sound. 73, 75 Indian Town, 73 in Okeechobee. We're looking at low 70s in Jupiter as well. 73 there, 76 Wellington, 75 Belle Glade, and 77s from Boynton to Delray to Boca. So when we look at the hour by hour forecast, we're looking at temperatures that continue to steadily decrease through the evening hours. We'll get into the 50s overnight tonight. It may feel a little cooler than the actual temperatures with winds out of the north, and then another warm day tomorrow and a cooler night tomorrow night. Then we'll be looking ahead for later in the week for a very powerful cold front with strong Arctic air behind it moving down into Florida by Friday night. We're going to take a close up look at that and what you can expect through the weekend. That's coming up in just a few minutes.
All right, Glenn, thank you. Well, we're getting a first look inside Brightline's new Orlando station. The future station is located at Orlando International Airport. It will feature several luxury amenities in its three-story building, including self-serve kiosks, restaurants, as well as shopping. Guests will also have access to free Wi-Fi charging stations and 87 televisions. The station will open later this year. The trains will accommodate passengers traveling from Orlando to Miami in just over three hours. Happening on the Treasure Coast, the Martin County School District will be holding its first pop-up job fair of the year at its headquarters in two days. Leaders are looking to fill about 30 teacher openings and many bus driver positions ahead of the next academic year. Suji Nam is in Stewart with what you need to know if you are looking for your next job. No matter your background, the Martin County School District is looking to hire more people who are excited to serve in the community and are asking you to swing on by their pop-up job fairs. We want to start the school year with all of our um, positions filled with quality teaching staff, all of our bus drivers um, ready to roll so everyone can get to school. The pop-up job fair will be held on Southeast Federal Highway from 3 to 6 p.m. Wednesday. If you're in shorts and a t-shirt and you want to come in because you saw the sign, come on in, we're happy to have you. But if you really have an opportunity to prepare, bring that resume, you know, dress for your best success and come with a smile. The Martin County School Board recently approved a pay bump for its staff members. Our teachers will be making up to 48.7 for starting salary. Our bus drivers have been increased to $20 an hour and our non-instructional employees are starting at $15 an hour. District leaders say its teacher starting salary range is the highest on the Treasure Coast. They're looking to hire more countywide. Elementary, middle and high. We're looking for specialties in math and social studies and language arts. And we're really in dire need in our ESE department. Leaders say don't worry if you don't have a resume. They will help you along the way. And a lot of times it comes down to they're not sure they have their credentials or they're concerned about being certified. And then we kind of allay those fears and tell them about the, the process. It's not very complicated. Um, it might seem complicated, but it really isn't. And officials say there are many benefits that come with a job. If you get that family balance that a lot of people are trying to find in this day and age is that time off in the holidays and the summer's off. While walk-ins are welcome, officials do encourage you to pre-register for the event. For all the information, you can head on over to our website at WPBF.com. Reporting in Stewart, I'm Suji Nam for WPBF 25 News.